And this is Genesis 32 and verse 26. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, where I learned this truth from. Peace and salutations to the brothers on down, teaching, preaching, pushing this gospel. Good news to the four corners of the earth, waking up the hopeful elect of the house of Israel. Greetings also to the few sisters that tune into these video epistles. I call this lesson this morning, Jacob's sons can see beyond Esau, Edom's threats. That's right. And these faith tests are only going to increase as we're getting up to this, that hour. That hour shall I wander about. That hour we're asking, please, please, like the disciples, please increase our faith, our power, whose name is Yahweh, meaning he is, he to be the existing one. He's got an only begotten son. His name is Yahweh Shai, and that means Savior, Redeemer, he's our high priest and mediator. He's making intercession for us. And there's a wicked spirit in the earth occupied by this man running around calling himself the white man. His name is Esau Edom. That's who he is in the scripture. And so this uh, good and evil, uh, spiritual and carnal, up, down, black, white, this duality, it's been played out in the scriptures. Whether you can accept it or not, whether you can see it or not, but this lesson, what we want to highlight is, it's a story we know well with Jacob wrestling the angel. But it's just on my spirit, as we're approaching these perilous, perilous times, to have another look at this picture here that's been painted for us in the book. The Most High has a people. And this is the people, we are those people. Jacob had 12 sons. We of the tribe of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so this is playing itself out over and over. It's repeated in the scriptures. And just the certain people, they're just blocked from this truth. They can't get it because they've subscribed to the madness that this Edomite, since he's come back into power and since the uh, Renaissance, 13th, 14th century, he's put up himself as our power. Bouncing around the earth with our book. Claiming that he is the power, he's the son, he's the prophets, he's the angels, he's everybody, he's the people. It's got nothing to do with him. Everything that is in the book, he is in opposition to all of his laws. Everything, he's in opposition to what is in the book. And he's getting ready to be removed from power. Let's get straight back to this story here. Uh, where are we? Actually, let's start up a little bit. Genesis 32. 24 and Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day and when he saw that he prevailed not against him he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint and as he wrestled with him and we see Jacob struggling with this man who we later realized was the angel of the most high and he was must have been in agony fighting the power of our Patriarch Jacob is unimaginable most of the time when there's any interaction between a man and, uh, and an angel. You see the man bowing down and all the rest of it. But this didn't happen on this occasion. There's a lesson here. He was wrestling, what did he say in the next verse? And he said, uh, he saw that he prevailed not against him. He touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled. He continued in agony with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. This is the determination that we need to have. This is, what, this is an example here for us in the time that we're living in. And he said unto him, what is thy name? See your name. You think the angel didn't know his name? It's significant. He's asking his name. And he said, Jacob, Yaikwab. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, as Yasharala in the Hebrew. And what does it mean? He's telling him in the next verse, the next uh, sentence here. For as a prince hast thou power with the Most High and with men and has prevailed, as Yasharala in the Hebrew, he, prince of the power. You see, so our faith is getting ready to be tested and it's really important because 
Jacob was being like reactivated. You see, just like what happened when, uh, with, with Acts, Acts in, in one and two. Actually, let's get one of those. Let's get Acts. Uh, let's get Acts two. We have some foolishness that we was taught in these churches about this all this uh, funny language yabba 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 you that they uh, got us speaking i was like most of us was involved in this uh, madness but this is uh, the day of pentecost let's just read the first four three or four verses here acts 2 and when the day of pentecost we were speaking about this reactivation this connection being reinstituted within the 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 children of the most high his sons and when the day of pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them this is the apostles this is the disciples we're speaking about I'm sure if they became apostles yes they're apostles at that point and they were all filled with the holy spirit and began to speak with other tongues that's other languages they wasn't saying blah 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 and it is foolishness that they teach in these churches as the spirit gave them utterance how do we know there wasn't just speaking a load of yeah, gobbledygook and the thing? It, it, the, it tells us here, if we go further on, just jump to uh, verse 7. And they were all amazed. So the people had gathered the devout men, Hebrew Israelites, who were scattered abroad, had come for the day of Pentecost to worship. And they were all amazed because they were all speaking different languages. So this is what happened here. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Excuse me a moment here. Are they not all Galileans? And how hear we? This is verse 8. Every man in our own tongue. That's their own language. They could understand what these men were saying in their language. They wasn't speaking foolishness. Wherein we were born, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, dwellers in Mesopotamia and Judea, Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia and Egypt and the parts of Libya and Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes, Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of the Most High. So I don't want to get off track here. We just want to speak about this power, this reactivating spirit that Jacob received for a reason. Let's go back to it here. I just jotted in my notes here. It's a bit like the um, like those cartoons. You used to watch, you used to sit and watch this uh, uh, He-Man, for example. Just where they get all this type of stuff for you get this energized power the scripture said blessed be your eyes uh where are we he said unto him thine uh, verse 28 your name going to be changed verse 29 and jacob asked him and said tell me i pray thee thy name and he said wherefore is it that thou ask after my name and he blessed him there see Verse 30, and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, similar to Pineal, that uh, what's referred to as your third eye, that uh, like a, a spiritual connection, like an antenna to our power. That's what they're trying to calcify with all this madness that they've got us eating and drinking and poisoning all the air. They want to calcify your pineal gland to block that connection between you the children of Israel and your power and they're coming down with great wrath we're probably going to read that later uh, for I have seen the most high face to face <clears throat> and my life is preserved similar to, to Moses See, it's the same spirit here being in the presence of the most high and his life is preserved and as he passed over Penuel 
the sunness that we have we can read wisdom there rose upon him and he halted upon his thigh this wisdom the hebrew israelites the hopeful elect we can see the divine intents and purposes he said my life is preserved i'm gonna say malachi 3 and 6 let's get it for i am the lord lord in all caps i change not meaning it's yahweh speaking and what more did he say in the same verse therefore ye sons of jacob are not consumed see in the presence of the most high and you're not consumed you're being preserved where are we going to go to next uh, Luke Luke uh, 11 and 34 I think Luke 11 and 34 what does it say yes the light of the body is the eye Therefore, when thine eye is single, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee, that's, that's like he saw Edom, his, his light is darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. If thy whole body, this is all red letter, Yahweh Shai speaking. If thy whole body therefore be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light, as when the bright shining of a candle doth give thee light. Praise ye the Lord. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. And let's just read the first verse of the next chapter here in Genesis 33. You see, after the touch, after that divine intervention, that blessing that was put in and on our forefather. Look what happened next, uh, Jacob. This is 33, Genesis 33. You'd have to read all of this. I'm not going to read. I just want to get this first verse here. And Jacob lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, Esau, Edom, his brother, came and with him 400 men and he divided the children unto Leah and unto Rachel and unto the two handmaids 400 men so really he had to strategize and hide put some of the children around the back and some at the front and to hide the children from his brother but why did he need to hide them? We see that it's like a, he's got to deal subtly with Esau, Edom. So we see this duality we spoke about at the top there between the spiritual and the carnal. He's turned up with 400 men to meet his brother. Why is he doing that? Let's see if we can get a clue why he was doing that. Genesis 27 verse 41. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father bless him and esau said in his heart the days of mourning for my father are at hand and then what then will i slay that's to murder my brother jacob that's what was in his heart and if you can receive it this is cain and abel this story been playing itself out here but this time it was going to be different jacob was imbued with special discernment and judgment and power just before that to deal subtly with his carnal minded brother who was coming prepared to do away with him and so he dealt subtly with the brother you'd have to read the rest of the story he packed him with hundreds of goats and stuff to appease the brother having all of his his wives and his children bowing down to this carnal brute of a man see this is the so-called white man the devil in the scriptures i want you to get a grip on who this man is try to understand it ask for discernment 
to get over the madness that this man has got everyone believing that he is God. You can't see the wickedness that he's doing. You don't know his voice. When he's speaking, you don't know it's him. So you just jump ahead and do all the wickedness, which is against your power. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. And he's getting ready. I'm not going to make the lesson too long. He's getting ready to come down with great wrath. Because he's not, actually, let's just get it. Yeah. Let's get Revelation 12 and 12. Where are we? 12 and 12. Yes. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come. That means there's no quarter of the earth, no part in the earth where this man and his madness is not going to come down. Why? Why? For the devil, Esau, Edom, the Edomites who are currently in rulership, is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Now, what's he coming with? Revelation 13, 16, he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive his under-the-skin technology. That's that crazy thing that he's pushing. He wants to inject everyone with his, like, branding. And he wants to put it in their right hand or in their forehead. In another scripture, it says, in their hand. He just, just wants to get it into your body to brand you. I'm going to wrap the lesson up there. Just, just get this one last. 2 Corinthians 6 and 2. For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted. And in the day of salvation have I secured thee. That's a say, help thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We see this man getting ready to come down. With great wrath. But we are the sons of Jacob. And we can see. So you've been listening to this. Jacob's sons can see beyond Esau, Edom's threats. Shalom. Until the next one.